removing the Riemann hypothesis from the complex plane. The general idea in this video is to use a to function convergence region to find real zero values. In the previous video I showed a nice animation of the critical line passing through the zero point again and again. That animation used analytic continuation of zeta function where the real part is one half. But the zeta function is not really equal to zero because that was analytic continuation zero which represents the center of the divergent spiral at that point. Because of that, we can't say zeta in the critical strip equal to zero using an equation. And that is why I will use eta function, because it extends the zeta function real part convergence region from above 1 to a larger domain region above 0. This way I will be able to assign a real 0 using an equation. I don't want to do a spoiler here, but at later chapters I will talk about absolute convergence and conditional convergence in this context. There is a game-changing point between absolute convergence and conditional convergence that I will show only at chapters 4 and 5. For now just try to think about a to function convergence region and that we need to find when the convergence reaches zero. In order to do that, we will first show a to function movement on the complex plane. The first equation is the a to function. The second equation is the movement of a to function on the real axes. The third equation is the movement of eta function on the imaginary axes. I will show you three different animation using those equations. The first animation will be when the real part of eta function is 2. The second animation will be when the real part of eta function is 1. The third animation will be when the real part of eta function is 0.5. On all three animation the imaginary part range will be from 8 to 14.134725 and that is deliberately because on the first animation I will show absolute convergence area that has no zero but just to show the movement using those equations. On the second animation I will show absolute convergence area with zero of the eta function. On the third animation I will show area with zero of the zeta function and on later chapters I will show why. This is the first equation which represents the movement of a to function on the complex plane. This is the second equation which represents the movement of a to function on the real axes. This is the third equation which represents the movement of a to function on the imaginary axes. This is the first animation when the real part of a to function is 2. It shows absolute convergence area that has no zero and the movement using those three equations. This is the second animation when the real part of a to function is 1. It shows absolute convergence area with zero of the a to function at point 2 pi over ln 2. This is the third animation when the real part of a to function is one half. It shows the first non-trivial zero of the zeta function and on later chapters I will show why it reaches to a real zero value. This animation only used the first 1000 steps of the a to function, which is not even close to infinity, to say the least. What I want to show is that the Riemann hypothesis equivalent to the following statement. When the movement of a to function on the real axes is equal to zero and the movement of a to function on the imaginary axes is equal to zero as well, where a and b are real numbers and the only solution for a between zero and one is when a is equal to one half. Remember at the start of the video I showed you that the zeta function is not really equal to zero because it used analytic continuation zero which represents the center of the divergent spiral at that point. And because of that, we can't say zeta in the critical strip equal to zero using an equation. Well, this time, the eta function is really equal to zero at infinity. When zeta function is equal to zero then also eta function is equal to zero. 
The difference between the two is that one is using analytic continuation zero and the other is using real zero value. This real zero value of the eta function represents the center of the convergent spiral. On the next chapter I am going to show you where all the non-trivial zeros by using a special summation function. Stay tuned.